On this video, I'm going to talk about the non-domicile rule changes and why British expats could be the big winners of these changes, but you might have to do some planning. Now, before doing that, go over to adamfire.com, especially if you're an expat or a high net wealth individual, and see how I can help you. Now, on this video, I'm going to talk about, first of all, what are the current rules, then what are the proposed new rules, and then how can you adapt to those proposed new rules. So right now, if you're a British expat, you can easily not pay UK income tax and national insurance and so on. You have to follow the HMRC ties test. This video is not formal uh, legal or tax advice, but it's fairly easy for a British person to avoid those taxes. However, this is something that catches up a lot of high net wealth British people and even many middle class British people. It's a huge mistake to think that just because you're not a UK taxpayer, you don't have to pay UK inheritance tax because domicile is different to residency. Changing your domicile is much more difficult than changing your tax residency or residency. And especially if you're living in Qatar or Saudi or UAE or, or any other country that doesn't easily give you citizenship, you shouldn't assume that your domicile is outside of the UK. So the current rules basically mean if you were to die with, say, a 10 million pound estate, you are potentially paying 40% uh, above the threshold, which is currently £325,000 or £650,000 as a couple. Uh, and the difference is, in the UK, most wealthy people, or indeed upper middle income people, and upper middle wealth people, for lack of a better term, at least plan for inheritance tax. But many uh, British expats overseas just don't plan for that at all. However, the UK has changed the non-domicile rules for foreign people, mainly wealthy foreign people living in the UK. That's been all over the media, and you don't need, uh, need me sorry, to tell you what those changes are. Basically, it's going to be harder for wealthy foreign people to live in the UK and pay very little tax on their overseas income. But what a lot of people haven't focused on is that actually, from 2025, the proposal is the British people will only be subject on inheritance tax uh, on their UK assets specifically if they've been an expat for more than 10 years. So what does this mean? This means putting it in blunt terms. If you've got five million pounds in the UK and five million pounds offshore, the five million pounds offshore potentially wouldn't be taxed. Uh, whereas the five million in the UK would be taxed still. Likewise, if you've got a million pound house in the UK and you've got a million pound house uh, or investments offshore, the a million pound house in the UK would be taxed, the a million offshore wouldn't be taxed. So what does that mean in human terms? Well, basically it means that a lot of people come 2025, if these proposals come in, a lot of people are gonna sell their UK assets if they're offshore because, uh, well, uh, inheritance tax of 40% is a lot more than paying capital gains tax, a 20 odd percent. Uh, and I think these rule changes do show though, that with good planning, you can reduce your taxation as an expat in a, a, a proper way. Um, obviously there are some caveats. There's gonna be an election before then, the Labour Party, if they come in, might not keep these changes, but they probably will, uh, well, you would imagine they probably will, because they were calling for changes to the non-DOM regime. So. It would be strange if they also wanted British expats not to benefit from that particular uh, change. Likewise, we also have to look at the detail uh, because right now I think the proposal is that there'll be a 10 year cutoff. In other words, if you were to go back to the UK, say next year, the 10 year clock would start ticking again. So if you were to go back in 2026, uh, you would need to be an expat until 2036. So it's not gonna be for all British people, I don't think, uh, looking at the proposal if you've just been living overseas for a couple of years i think it's not really going to benefit you but either way it's good when it comes to these things to do proper planning offshoring yourself offshoring your assets is always a good thing i left the uk 13 years ago i tried to keep as few ties to the uk as possible because i personally think and this is just my subjective opinion but over time hmrc and their uh, ties test will get more and more strict potentially um so I am comfortable with offshoring my assets anyway, but this proposal could make it even more of a financial incentive for you to reduce your exposure to UK assets. 
Anyways, I'm, I'm very, very pleased and positive uh, to say that I believe I've picked the right one. Um, the results um, in the last couple of years have, have, have overreached my expectations by far. Um, and um, I see no reason um, why it should not continue. Of course, I can highly recommend uh, him as your financial advisor for now and for the future. Because hesitating is uh, missing out. Obviously, the best result in market right now is Adam.